I'll have a, a couple of links down below if you want to reference what I'm going to be talking about. And it's also to credit where I'm getting some of this information as well. I'm going to read some of the articles in their own words. I'll quickly give my opinion on this whole thing. It's uh, fucking stupid. That's what it is. It was not a trade. It was a surrender. And I truly believe that the whole thing is reckless and dangerous. And I can quickly explain it. So here's the exchange that happened there with anybody who's been following the story with Brittany Griner, the W. NBA star that was detained in Russia some 10 months ago for being caught with a vape machine with less than a gram of uh, cannabis oil. And there's Boot right there, although it's written Bout. His name is Victor Boot, the one holding the yellow envelope. And I did not know who this person was until about an hour ago. So they did the prisoner swap and... That happened in the United Arab Emirates, where the prisoner exchange took place at the Abu Dhabi airport. Again, here it says that the athlete was caught earlier this year with a small amount of vape cartridges and hashish at Moscow's airport and sentenced to nine years in a trial that's been criticized as being politically motivated. And Putin had been campaigning for Boots' release for quite some time. So he was on his radar. And... We already know who Brittany Griner is. I mean, no offense, there's not much to say about her other than 10 months in jail. She plays basketball. Okay. Now, let's get on with this guy, which is a picture of Victor Boot when he arrived in Bangkok at a court back in 2010. So let's quickly go over what he's about and why it's such a big deal and why I feel it's dangerous and reckless what Biden did. Shortly after Victor Boot's conviction in 2011 on charges including conspiring, conspiring, French is my first language, to kill American citizens, the Russian arms dealer Victor Boot relayed a defiant message through his lawyer as he faced the prospect of decades in prison. Mr. Boot, his lawyer said, believes this is not the end. More than a decade later, Mr. Boot, now 55, has been freed despite serving less than half of his 25-year prison sentence. He was exchanged on Thursday for the American basketball star Brittany Griner, had been in prison for 10 months. Russian officials had pressed for Mr. Boot's return since his conviction by a New York jury, jury on four counts that included conspiring to kill American citizens. Prosecutors said he had agreed to sell anti-aircraft weapons to drug enforcement and informants who were posing as armed buyers for the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. The Attorney General at the time, Eric Holder, called Mr. Boot one of the world's most prolific arms dealers, became notorious among American intelligence officials, earning the nickname the Merchant of Death. As he evaded capture for years, his exploit helped inspire a 2005 film, Lord of the War, that actually starred Nicolas Cage. And, uh, yeah, it is pretty frickin' wild. I mean, he's been supplying arms to Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, rebels in Rwanda. And I think he goes all the way back into the late 80s. So this guy is the bargaining chip they use to give to Russia... To get Brittany Griner out. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy for her. I don't have nothing bad or good to say about her. I'm just glad that she's free. But is the cost worth it? Really? Because another person who I, no offense, didn't know anything about until a couple of hours ago, Paul Wheland, who was actually born in Canada. He's a former Marine that has been sentenced to 16 years in jail on spying charges. So let's quickly read over this here, in case you're not familiar. Whelan's been detained and accused of espionage. And here he was in a courtroom on June 15th of 2020. He's serving 16 years in a Russian penal colony on espionage charges. And it did not get figured into the prisoner exchange on Thursday involving the basketball star Brittany Griner. Whelan was detained first by agents from Russia's Federal Security Service in Moscow's Metropole Hotel near the Kremlin on December the 28th, 
2018, so literally almost to the day four years. Investigators said that he was a spy for military intelligence with a rank of colonel or higher and had been caught red-handed with a computer flash drive containing classified information. Whelan said that he had been in Russia for a friend's wedding and had been given the hard drive in a sting by a Russian friend, and he said that he thought it contained holiday photos. After a trial held entirely behind closed doors that U.S. diplomats said was unfair and opaque, Whelan, now 52, was convicted of spying in 2020, sentenced to 16 years in a maximum security jail. He is currently being held in the IK-17 penal colony in the Mordovia region east of Moscow. So, yeah, and he served in the Marine Corps from 2003 to 2008, half a decade, much of the time as an administrative clerk in Iraq, and at the end of that period, he was dishonorably discharged for larceny and other lesser offenses after being found to have tried to steal $10,000. Well, whatever. The point is that a lot of people are losing their minds over, and I can understand, is they gave up the U.S., Victor Boot, but they left this guy behind who served his country. Apparently, Russia just didn't want to budge at all whatsoever on the negotiations. And to me, I mean, it's easy for me to say, right? I mean, I, I barely have a, a fucking high school education. So it, it's very easy for me to just say, oh, I would have done this and everything would have worked out. That's not what I'm saying. But I would have somehow, some way, if that was my expertise with negotiation and prison swapping in the middle of the Middle East, middle of the Middle East, I would have pushed that if you want someone like Victor Boot of his caliber out, I'm sorry, but Brittany Griner and Paul Wheeland have to come home. Whether you bluff and you say you're not going to budge, I don't know, but I would have. And I'm not saying they didn't try. And that's the thing. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know how all the proceedings work. But it's just, it's really sad to see that. And a lot of people are upset. And again, to talk about it, because it can get political for obvious reasons. Most liberals, which I'm starting to question what really is the name that defines me. Because when I look into politics and what makes a liberal a liberal and a conservative a conservative, even though I'm Canadian and your politics in the U.S. are a little bit different, I tend to be much more liberal than I am conservative. But again, here's another case that I don't agree with. Jill Biden, bunch of people in the news just saying that this is a victory. For who, though? I believe the victory is greater for Russia. They now know, and so does the world, that Americans' lives can be used as a bargaining chip. Let's just kidnap these people and have them let go these really, really dangerous people. I mean, Victor Boot is like, I don't know who to compare him to. I mean, I know uh, El Chapo there, and, you know, I don't know what caliber this guy would rank compared to that or some of all the other big names that I've heard about, your Gaudis, your Al Capones, and all that kind of stuff. This guy apparently is like way up there, and I just didn't know about it because there's, there's a lot of people like that in the world. It's hard for me to know everything, right? And to me, since Putin had showed a lot of interest personally in Victor, I don't know. I just, I just would have pushed. But their defense, which it could be true, is it was either... Britney's coming home or nobody's coming home. And I get that. But my problem is how many of these Victor boot chips do you have in the States that you can now bargain because apparently they're still working on Paul Wheeland to get him released. I don't know how many high profile characters like Victor they have behind bars that they can use to bargain with. Like, I just, 
I don't, I don't get it, but I do know this from looking at multiple sources. Again, I don't care if it's the goddamn New York Times. I don't give a shit if it's CNN or Fox News. In the end, what is the real news is that this did happen, okay, with their own wording, right? So I don't want to get into that debate uh, right now because some people might be like, oh, it looks like you're always on CNN news. Yeah, I cross-reference everything. Ultimately, in the end, like I said, the news is the news. It's just the specifics that can be a little bit different. But this did, in fact, happen. And it should not have happened. This literally, I truly believe, can actually make things more dangerous. Well, now, Victor's out. Who knows what kind of shenanigans he's going to be up to now? Is he just going to lay low and be like, oh my god, I, I don't want to go back to jail? Or is he going to be up to his old tricks again? Because, boy, oh boy, the things that he's done. Like, I think it was like selling AK, typical AK-47s to, you know, to some people in Africa that fueled like a civil war and it was super bloody. And then one guy was saying this wasn't just by the hundreds or the thousands. This was like by the several tens of thousands. He would have... I don't want to misword or misquote the exact number. He had a fleet of airplanes. Let's just leave it at that. Like a huge fleet of airplanes. It might have been like up to 60 airplanes, his own private force. And he could literally with pinpoint precision just move all this military tech weaponry and all this kind of stuff anywhere in the world. He could just have a plane sent out. Like this guy was a major, major player. And Brittany Griner is, no offense, just a basketball player. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. And again, I'm confused because of that whole thing. How are every liberal on board and like, oh, that was a great deal. We finally got her home at all costs, at all costs, I heard on Twitter. I'm like, but is that cost worth it? Right? Because again, the two things, what's he going to be doing now that he's out? Because he's not going in jail in Russia. And what is that going to show the rest of the world? Is that showing the world that the U.S. is weak when it comes to negotiations? I feel like I've been rambling on enough about this. I'm going to have, like I said, a couple of links here down below just to help credit the websites that I've been referencing my information from. Uh, I don't know if one of them came from CNN Today Times, New York Times. To be honest with you, I don't even know if they're left-leaning or right-leaning. Honestly, I don't give a flying fuck where they come from. The information was still there that I needed. The picture is still real. At least I think it is, right? Photoshop's pretty powerful, but I'm pretty sure that's a real picture, and it doesn't matter what the URL at the top of my web browser says, right? And that way you can you know, fine tune into some other stuff if you're ever so inclined to do so, because chances are, if you're watching this, you're into the news. To me, this is a big story. Uh, I didn't cover uh, Griner originally just because there's so much going on with my main channel, which is predominantly video games and stuff like that, and just life in general, right? Running a YouTube channel has been incredibly time-consuming, very, very draining, let alone running a second channel or at least trying to this thing's probably never going to amount to anything but honestly i prefer this channel over the one that's making me money every month this one's probably never going to make me any money but it's an outlet i've always wanted my own talk show i know i talk about this a lot the gift of gab i just love talking shit about random stuff i don't always know what i'm talking about i may not always make sense but everybody's got a voice and even though i'm canadian I truly, truly believe in the First Amendment. I mean, you can take away whatever. People's rights to have rocket launchers and all that kind of shit and limit what kind of weapons that they can have. Or just anything in general with the law, right? You know, how you can only have a car that can have up to 500 horsepower, at least here in Canada. Like, there's rules for everything. But when it comes to speech, what comes out of your mouth when you want to share the thoughts that are in your head, even if they're crazy, like Alex Jones, share it. Let it flow. Let it flow. So I am 100% 
in disagreement with this. And like anything, some people will agree, some people won't agree. And those that don't agree, if you made it this far into the video, for real, let me know down below. Why was this a good deal? Why don't you agree with me? Why was this the right course of action to get Brittany Griner home safe back on U.S. soil? That's it for me for today. If you liked the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm in making me a little bit more relevant in the search results when people are looking things up. If you didn't like the video, that's fine. I'm not a snowflake. I'm like an iceberg. One that doesn't melt, by the way, because, you know, the whole thing in the North Pole. Anyways, that's another story for another day. If you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll see some of you in the next video. Bye for now.